And that is our artist of the week, Ian Carlo Ancino, also known as Lamborghini, an Afro dance hall singer, global prison ambassador, and AFI representative at the United Nations in Vienna as well as New York. And he's using his music and motivational message to bring healing to men, women, and juveniles in prison across the world. He has several songs to his credit and recently released a new single titled Move. So where have you moved to? <laughs> Good morning. Good and morning. Thanks for joining us. All right. Good um, morning. Thank you for having me. Wow, this is, this is quite a, quite interesting. I mean, I like I I do, I like to dance, so the dance hall part yeah. is um, yeah. It's just that you know I can't stand in my studio now, otherwise my director is going to come for me. But um, first of all, <laughs> tell us tell us you know your story, your foray into music, and until now, how did it start for you? Um, so basically, like um, you know, growing up in Lagos in a Cotswold Bay. Um, I was part of the children's choir, you know, that's exactly where it all started from. And uh, when I became a little bit older, you know, I made up my mind that I wanted to use music. You know, I chose music as my career, you know, and, um, you know, started going to the studio, recording, you know, dropping singles here and there. But a lot changed for me at, um, at 23 years old, you know, where I realized that music is not just to entertain you know but i could use it as a tool you know to bring hope and um you know uplift you know both my fans and those that are locked up you know behind bars you know and that's how you know um i i became more intentional more deliberate you know with my lyrics the kind of songs i put out you know because i i see myself as for every time i'm in the studio and I open my mouth, I see myself as I'm a, it's an opportunity, you know, for me, you know, to pass the right message out there. Why prisons? Ah, uh, good question. Um, I used to tell people that pre prison chose me, you know, because... Oh. Uh, <laughs> yep, I, that's why I tell people, prison chose me because I never... I never would have thought in 100 years, you know, that I would, you know, I would be the one going into the facilities, you know, to perform, bring hope, you know, to this inmate. But while I was in Nigeria, I, I got tired of people complaining, you know. I, it's like I was surrounded by a group of youth. I know a lot of things are not working in the country, but I just felt like I want to be on the solution side of things, you know. I want to be part of the people, you know, bringing solution. And the prison, you know, came to my mind. So I reached out to the authorities, um, you know, reached out to the controller, former controller general of prison at the time, you know, Olushala and, um, and that's how the journey started for me, you know. And it, it brings me so much joy, you know, just to see, you know, these thousands of inmates, um, you know, see them smile, see them feel uplifted whenever I'm in the facility, you know, performing for them. Hmm. That's interesting. Prison chose you. You know, the, the mere thought of prison to some people is scary enough. I mean, yeah. the word is scary. Well, by the way, yep. there are no there are no prisons no longer. They are now called correctional uh, facilities, correctional, correctional centers. Yep. And interestingly, this journey, this path that you have taken, has taken you all over the world. Tell us the examples yeah. that, of, um, you know, your, your visits to correctional facilities, you know, in various parts of the world. What, what are the things that you have seen? And how do you think we can cut down the numbers of people who, who are compelled to go to these correctional facilities? So um, it's interesting you ask that question because the first facility I, I got into outside of Nigeria was in Leicester in the UK. Um, HMP prison Leicester and that was the first time in my in my part you know doing prison reform that I'll find myself you know in the UK and the first thing that that that, um, that occurred to me is the high level of you know equipment high level of vocational um, facility and the way they made the facility extremely conducive at the point I asked myself I said 
am I in a prison or I'm in a I'm in somebody's apartment? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and when I saw that, you know, um, it, it it dawned on me that, you know, you know the part when they say correctional, you know, it dawned on me that that is one aspect that Nigeria still needs to work extremely hard on. You know, um, yes, prison is important, but it is it is not effective if the necessary tools to reform the minds are not in place. You know, and also addressing the question that you asked, so because there were two inmates in each cell when I, the particular facility I visited, and they were telling me it's congested. I said, only two in a cell, and you're calling that congested? Ah, where I'm coming from, um, like my song you're playing right now, I say, human being sardine, um, human being sardine, uh, you know? So the problem and why our prison is congested is because of our slow judiciary system, you know, until we realize that nobody ends up in prison without going through the judiciary system. And if we can, you know, do everything we can to ensure that there is proper database, there is pro uh, cases are being picked up when they should be picked up, uh, cases are being addressed when they should be addressed, you know, we will continue to experience congestion in our facilities in Nigeria. And it's, it breaks my heart, I wouldn't lie to you, hmm. you know. And when I, when I started performing, because, um, I kicked off my global prison tour in 2020, January, February 2020, and we started from we started from DC between DC and Maryland, you know. But as a result of COVID, we had to hold on. Um, we had to hold on on the tour. But between in February, I visited five facilities. Um, I would not lie to you. Um, one of the facility looked like a university, you know, uh, the, the, and it was a juvenile facility. They, they are juveniles, they have everything you can think of, you know, equipment-wise and uh, 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 vocational, the right number of staff, you know, the right food, even up to the food, nutrition, oh. everything was in place. They look clean, you know, from their outfits, everything, you know, and, you know, we, you can't underestimate the power of all these elements when you're trying to reform a, someone's mind you know okay. make sure they are eating make sure they are eating the right set of food make mm. sure the equipment make sure the environment is clean make sure you, because when you are trying to reform right reform is not necessarily the book they are reading but every element around them counts because mm. they are locked up in that space you know and i like every facility i go to i tell them i said i tell the uh, uh, the men and women and the boys and girls in these facilities I said, you are not in a prison. You are in a waiting room. You know, what you do while you are in this waiting room would determine how you will be reintegrated properly back into the society. Well, you know, so you see, it's, um... <laughs> if I, if I, if I <laughs> let you go, I'm pretty sure that we can do this for another one hour. You know, because it will yeah. seem like your, your passion... I don't Now I'm confused. Should I be asking you about prisons or about music? <laughs> but, <laughs> because your Let's passion is quite, <laughs> is, is, is quite um, yeah. contagious right there. Well, as yeah. um, you have uh, made us known, your, your career in music has spanned quite a number of years and has touched you know, along a, a good number of paths as well. But um, yeah. I want to believe that you are raising, should I use the word disciples? Or well, this prison thing that you're Ooh. talking about, but maybe we can talk about that some other time. But tell us about this yeah. your new song and um, what's the plan? So I wrote, I wrote that song during the pandemic, you know. Um, during the pandemic, nobody could move. Nobody could um, do anything. A lot of people didn't even know what to do with themselves, you know, as a result of the pandemic. We've never been, nobody has ever seen the world shut down like that, you know. And I, I just wanted something to encourage people to be able to move even while they are at home, you know. I, I wanted to be able to connect with the global community, you know, um, in this time that we're all experiencing um, this um, global pandemic, you know. and I just started writing it, you know, I, it made me appreciate my family more because I was always on the move, you know, I was always traveling and I, I really was not um, 
paying attention to certain things that were very important, you know, in my personal life, you know. So I just, um, it, it was a reflection moment. And in, in between that reflection, I thought I should share the song, you know, with the world, you know, um, and just keep moving, you know, no matter how slow or how fast you think it is, there is something for you to do that will keep you going and make, put you through, you know, this particular stage that the world mm. is right now, you know. So that's where the inspiration for the song came from. Um, when you write Move, when we were told to stay, I wonder if you wrote another song that will stay, but don't answer that question. No. Um. <laughs> it, it is, it, it, you, you, you move in your mind. In you your know, mind, you know, okay. Like, in your okay. mind, you know, uh, move using the social platform. Oh. Move because a lot, a, a lot of people didn't felt that their businesses cannot be done online. Mm. A lot of companies realized that they don't even need hundred staff coming to their uh, office every day. You can mm. work, you know, from your various location. You're moving. You well. know. That, that, that sounds a little more like a philosophical thing. But, you know, one last thing just before we wrap it all up. So, um, movies out. And in another yep. five years from now, what do we expect from Lamborghini? Well, five years from now, we're looking at, you know, taking the music on a global scale, which we're already doing right now. Um, Move is currently my highest stream song on the global front, you know, we have a lot of huge following in America right now, across Europe, um, you know, even like South America and, and some other part of Africa as well. So okay. five years from now, we're looking at, you know, um, going on the world stages, performing, you know, okay. and hopefully putting out a couple of albums as well along the way. I, I, I'm just wondering, lastly, I thought I said lastly the other time, but... Just maybe an hour, <laughs> about 10, 15 seconds. I'm wondering. Yeah. Lamborghini, the brand, and prisons. First of all, why Lamborghini? Why not Ferrari or Peugeot or Lada? <laughs> so Lamborghini, <laughs> Lamborghini was a nickname from my dad. You know, um, my dad was a marine engineer, and he traveled a lot. So whenever he's around, I was, I'm those, I was one of the children that was all over him so much. You know, it's like... There is no British space, so he will look for things around the house and say, okay, go and do this, go and do that, go and do this. And the one day, I came back with such a quick speed. As he said, have you finished everything? I said, yes. Ah, you are now moving like a Lamborghini. And it became a... <laughs> it became a, uh, a nickname around the wow. house. But when, when I lost my dad, um, you know, um, the name meant more to me you know, than just a nickname, you know, and I, I just told myself, I, I went to the court, I swore an affidavit, I made it part of my official names, and it became my stage name as well, because it reminds me of that special, you know, moment that I shared with my father. Well, you just told so many people right now to live unending memories in the lives of the people they encounter, especially their children yeah. and their wards. Well, we have to thank you very much and uh, wish you all the best in all that Thank you, you for do having me. to make the world a better place. Yen Kalawansin, also known as, oh no, no, maybe I should say it better now that I know it's your official name. Yenka Lamborghini Lawansin, right? Yes, exactly. That's how all it right. is, actually. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you so much and um, enjoy. Thank you for having me. All right, then. So that's the show today. Many, many thanks for watching and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And please, Make Nigeria better for you. I'm Ayo Makide. Enjoy your weekend.